Hello, this is Mark from the Me Techie channel. Thanks for joining me on this video. Today we are talking about the Flexbook Touch. This is a 7-in-1 keyboard case for the iPad 12.9 inch. That's the big iPad released in 2021. It's the one with the immersive screen, amazing technology. They're touting it as the best portable display they've ever made for any iPad in the history of Apple. I'm sure they'll say that next year when, when the next one comes out. But uh, regardless of that, Maybe it's time for a case, and with something this valuable, you definitely want to have some form of protection. Now, your choices are without a keyboard or with a keyboard. Uh, if you've decided you definitely want a keyboard, then this case will fit the bill. What I like about this case over the Apple case is a few things. Number one, the price is considerably less. The other thing is it's, I think, more protected because it's protected all around the case, whereas the Apple cases don't necessarily always protect the sides of your iPad. Not that that is definitely the most vulnerable part of the iPad, but I think it's just something about having it completely covered in a case that appeals to me personally. Now, the advantage of this Flexbook Touch, it really does raise things up a notch because it has what they're claiming to be seven modes. And it's where you can position the lid frontwards, backwards, sideways, and you can put the laptop or excuse me, the iPad in a laptop mode, stand mode, corner mode, tent mode, tablet mode, share mode, and protect mode. Now they're calling them modes. Um, it's basically the cover position. And they're saying that there's seven here. That's kind of a stretch. Um, they, there's a little bit of marketing going on there with when they say seven different positions. There's probably four or five positions that you can move things around and uh, but they're calling them seven different features. Of course, that's what they're supposed to do. They're marketing the product. All right, so now we have the uh, LED backlight. So if you wanted a keyboard light for this, it does have that, and it's got 10 colors. So if you are into colors or mood, that will suit you just fine. There's also a loop for the Apple Pencil. It's got a little harness for that. And then it actually uh, has full access to the camera and the ports with the case on. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look at each of these seven positions to see if any of these appeal to you. All right, let's look at the different modes. I'm going to start with this one called Protect, which is the mode where it's obviously closed completely. The case is a fully surrounding case that surrounds the entire iPad on all sides, back, front, side, side, top, bottom. 100%. So that's a, like I was mentioning earlier, that's kind of an advantage over some of the Apple offerings. Now, even though it's closed, it's not really closed in a way that isn't inconvenient. For example, you have openings for the two speakers here, along with the microphone on one side and the power on and off button. So all of these things are readily available to you, yet still highly protected. In addition, you have this handy harness here if you were to incorporate the Apple Pencil with it. Then on the back, uh, you do see the hinge, but it's completely closed there. Then on the other side, we have availability for the two speakers and the charge port. This is the charger for the case and the on-off button for the case here on that side. Then the front is completely closed. There are two buttons here for the volume and then a little opening or inset where you can peel the case open, pry it open. Okay. And then the bottom here is, uh, like I said, fully protected. You do have pads. These little, they, they are made of rubber and they're inset or embedded or embezzled within the actual case. So I feel like they're going to stay for a while and that's good quality. All right, the top does have the camera exposed. I don't know if I mentioned that, but there's the camera is exposed with the case top uh, on. All right, now the next mode is laptop mode. This one you're probably most likely going to use most often because if, after all, you ordered the keyboard case, you're going to want to use the keyboard most likely. So laptop mode is there. Now I want to show you some subtleties here. On a traditional laptop, or at least a, an Apple laptop, as you open the, the cover, you'll note that the amount of effort that it takes to move the cover from beginning to end is about the same. You'll also note that you can have the cover open just a couple of inches and it will remain open. So it's it's a wonderful hinge here on a traditional Apple laptop. Um, this case is a little different. You have to really use a lot of effort to get it started, to get it open and under that first thing. And you'll see that you have to get past a certain point for it to hold. That point is somewhere around here. And then as you move it uh, further, um, it holds obviously there like a laptop. 
but uh, and that's this angle here. So we're now now we're about a 90 degree. You'll probably want to use it more like this as a laptop. And in that situation, it works really well. But you'll notice it's a little top heavy. And if I go a little bit further back and let go of the case bottom, it will easily topple over like this. The iPad is a heavy unit and this case doesn't have enough. Um, it's designed in a way that you're going to either have to hold it if you like this app laptop angle really exaggerated. Now this is exaggerated. Most people I'd say use a laptop something like here to here maybe. Um, let me just see here. Yeah. So you're on the hairy edge there of having that go backwards. But let's be honest, do, do you really just, well, you're, you're going to use it with your hands on this, so that's going to hold it down. I, I think there's a sweet spot there where it won't topple over, but I think that is a point to note. That was kind of a interesting paradigm that it is a little top-heavy. All right, so that's laptop mode. Now, if you take a look at uh, flipping this around like this, you swivel it around like this. Now, notice I didn't change the angle. I just swiveled it that way. And at this point, here's my keyboard behind the angle. And then in front is the display. And this is what they're calling stand mode, where you can look at it and have it standing up. And this is where you could just present uh, a movie while you're working or some other thing, maybe working in the kitchen or something like that. And then, so that's what they call stand mode. I think that's going to be a pretty popular way to do it. I've had this now for a month and a half, and uh, I don't use stand mode too much. You know where I use? I like tent mode. I think that's a cool concept. It's basically stand mode upside down, which is why I mentioned they're kind of stretching the uh, the number of modes, counting them as seven. T to me, tent mode is the same as stand mode because I haven't changed the angle of the actual unit. I'm just repositioning on how it is. But I do like the, t the tent mode better. And why do I like it better? Because it's, it's sturdy. You just put it down and it stays. The disadvantage of tent mode is that um, it's not as flexible. Like, for instance, if you are in stand mode, you can easily do this and this and this. Now you get different angles to choose from while you're working. This, it is just going to be like, you can't change it like this. That would be very awkward uh, and unnecessary. All right, so that's tent mode. Uh, tablet mode is take tent mode and put it down to the bottom. So now you've got a tablet. The keyboard is hidden in in inward, and the display is here. And this is where you're holding it, either on a lap uh, or just browsing it like a clipboard. That's what they call tablet mode. And then we have corner mode, which is an interesting one, completely interesting, in that you'd go back to uh, tent mode and you go to a 90 degree angle like this, and then you put it on the edge of a countertop or on the ledge somewhere, and then your display is this way. So like maybe on the top of a refrigerator or on the top of a high shelf, you can just put it there and let it play um, as a display without needing to mount it to the wall or something. So it's kind of an interesting concept. Again, there's that marketing kicking in, because kicking in, it really is, it's just, it's basically display mode, intent mode, upside down and at 90 degree angle. It's not really changing too much, but it, I guess you could, you could consider that a different view. And then here, I'll give them credit for this. This is share mode. Uh, let me show you what that is. Go back to laptop mode here, like this, okay? And you know, one of the problems with a traditional laptop, and when you're working side by side, like in my case, when I used to work with customers and I used to be building databases for them and I'd show them what I'm doing, they'd be sitting over here and I'd always have to do this. Hey, can you see what I mean? Okay, let me go back to work, 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 work. Uh, what do you think of that? And, and this would be the constant motion of what would happen. And you have to do it that way because the screen is fixed. Well, you can angle it this way here and simply do this. Now, the advantage of this is you can have that angle and your customer, the person you're presenting to, can see it while you maintain a proper um, ergonomic way to type and continue to do the work while you both share the screen. That is a concept that I really like when you're working side by side with someone. And of course, it goes the other way too. Right? So if you're working between two people, you can kind of do this thing. But I like that a lot. All right, so those are the different modes and the different flexible options with this.
Let's go take a look at some other features on the keyboard itself and what you can do with that. I'll go ahead and unlock my iPad here. So you have an on off button. So as you turn this on, you'll see the lights illuminate here along with the LED backlit keyboard. So I'll go to my notes app and I will type. And I just want to say that this keyboard really does feel amazing. It feels every bit as good um, as a regular, what you'd see like in an Apple keyboard or something like that. Now maybe it's not exactly the feel of an Apple keyboard, but it's very good. I mean, it's definitely acceptable, uh, great to work on, and much better than most other portable keyboards of its type. Uh, the keys have a long travel, and um, it just feels like I can fly on this thing. So, very productive keyboard, in my opinion. Feels great. Okay, so this button here will minimize the app and then bring you back to this home screen or the app view. Uh, notice if you push it again, you won't get back into the app. Now, if you double-click, it'll bring over all the apps, all the currently running apps, which is the same thing this button does. The difference being that if I'm in this app and I double click, it will collapse that, show all the apps, double click again, it'll bring it back. This one does the same thing with a single click. See that? Now they define it a little differently here in the instructions. The official name of those two buttons, this one is called Home, so that brings you home, but a long hold will be Siri. Now if I had Siri enabled on my iPad, you'd hear it and see it. This button they call Control Center. This button will make the onboard keyboard appear or disappear, which may only occur when you're in an app. So here's my Notes app, and I'm able to show or hide the on-screen virtual keyboard. This is for the iPad brightness specifically, not to be confused with the keyboard brightness, which is over here under light. We'll take a look at this in the dark here in just a second. So then we have the typical back button, play and pause button, the forward button. This is the mute button and the volume up and down, which works great for if you're listening to music. Okay, this will be the battery indicator. One click of this will show these lights indicating the current status of the keyboard case battery. Okay, this is the color option and the light option. Let's look at those in the dark. Okay, so for the color option, we have the capability of switching to different colors. In this particular mode, it's going through all the colors in a rotation. Click it again and it'll fix it on one color. And as I click through the colors, you can see the different shades. Red one is very cool. And then the brightness here, known as light, I can have no light whatsoever. And bright or dimmer. So various shades of brightness, two or three different options there. Then I have a pairing button, and then the delete button and lock button. Now this button here, it turns the trackpad on or off. With the trackpad on, you might be able to see here, I've got an actual cursor on the screen, which again makes it even more like a laptop than ever before. So I can go here and here like this. So I don't necessarily have to come up here and do it this way. I can do it right from the trackpad here. And then I can turn that off and it'll fix the cursor and disable the trackpad. All right, that takes care of the keyboard case. So I bought my case at Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, but you don't pay a dime extra. Thanks for watching this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching.